you have multiple sclerosis, but also a second or even a third autoimmune disease. But is it possible to kill two birds with one stone to take one medication that treats multiple diseases? We'll discuss that possibility in this video. But please take this as general information, not medical advice, and discuss your personal situation with a trusted provider or providers, as the case may be. I'm a neurologist, definitely not a hematologist or rheumatologist, and I'm not here to tell you how to treat Crohn's disease or rheumatoid arthritis. And there are a lot of different autoimmune diseases, easily more than 100. Some of the more common ones are listed here. You probably recognize Crohn's disease, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, and there are also very rare autoimmune diseases, IgG4-related disease, myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein-associated disease, and many I've never heard of. I'll focus on the more common ones in this presentation. It's commonly reported that people with MS are more likely to get other autoimmune diseases, but that's simply not true. It's just that these diseases are fairly common in the general population, hence it's easy to have multiple diseases. For example, this study looks at women without MS and compares them to women with MS and looks at the risk of various common autoimmune diseases. And you can see this vertical line, the odds ratio of one would suggest an equal risk between both groups. You can see the mean in this dark circle and the standard error, the line, and they roughly center around an odds ratio of one. There's a little bit of sampling error, but essentially the same risk with or without MS. This is another study looking at exactly the same thing with the same finding. If you look at the top line, having any autoimmune diseases, controls have a 32% risk of having at least one autoimmune diseases, and people with MS have a 28% risk of having an autoimmune disease other than MS, roughly the same. Now we'll talk about different drugs, but by far the most important thing you'll learn in this video is to avoid this class of drugs, TNF-alpha blockers or tumor necrosis factor alpha blockers. Some common examples listed on the right, Humira, Embrel, Remicade, used to treat various autoimmune diseases. They're well known to cause or increase the risk of multiple sclerosis. In one case series of inflammatory bowel disease, they doubled the risk of MS, roughly speaking. This sounds like a lot. It may not be that much in absolute terms. Let's say you have a 1 in 500 risk of MS. Maybe it's 1 in 250 with these drugs, but it's definitely statistically significant, and it can make increasing MS worse, trigger relapses, and cause new lesions on MRI. Generally speaking, people with MS should not take these drugs. Now, there are a lot of things someone might take into account when choosing a medication, like, for instance, their other medical conditions or the severity of the autoimmune diseases. Let's say you have very aggressive multiple sclerosis and mild psoriasis that doesn't even really need treatment, maybe resolves with just topical hydrocortisone cream. Of course, you're going to focus on multiple sclerosis, and in some cases, multiple sclerosis can be very mild and stable for decades, and maybe the other autoimmune disease is quite aggressive, and you would focus on that one. But one general strategy in treating people with multiple autoimmune diseases is general immunosuppressant medications, medications that have a broad effect and are going to have an effect in multiple autoimmune diseases. So some medicines for MS, like glutiram or acetate, are highly specific. You know, glutopa, copaxone, these drugs are thought to work like an allergy shot. They have amino acids that form proteins that have a structure similar to myelin antigens and induce tolerance to the immune system, they're not going to have benefit in any other autoimmune disease. But these drugs are medications that weaken the immune system in some general way. For instance, rituximab is an older medicine used to treat multiple autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, and it has various trade names, rituxan, truxema, reabni. It's useful for multiple autoimmune diseases also used in MS. Now, a lot of other drugs that deplete B lymphocytes, like Ocrevus, Briumbi, and Casimpta, there not, may not be a lot of data in other autoimmune diseases, but they're probably equally effective in treating, say, rheumatoid arthritis, I would presume. Some other examples are azathioprine or imuran, mycophenolate mofetil or salcept, methotrexate, and many others. For example, this is a list of just some of the many examples of autoimmune diseases treated with rituximab, some notable examples, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis. This is one study in rheumatoid arthritis in people who did not get better with a TNF-alpha drug such as Remicade, the class of drugs that you shouldn't take if you have MS. And they used a score called mean 28 joint disease activity, looking at joint arthritis and also a blood test. That's a marker of inflammation, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or ESR. And you 
you can see it tended to go down after the treatment, and there are also randomized trials supporting rituximab in rheumatoid arthritis. As another example, this is a study on lupus and preventing chronic kidney disease. They looked at two different immunosuppressants, mycophenolate mofetil or Celsept and azathioprine or Imuran, and this is probability of being free of kidney disease, and you can see Celsept was a little bit more effective. So let's talk about some specific diseases. What if you have MS and psoriasis? Well, there is a drug called Fumiderm, which is in a class of medications called fumaric esters that are currently used to treat multiple sclerosis. And Fumiderm has been used to treat psoriasis since the 1970s in Europe. It's not FDA approved for psoriasis in the United States. And so these three medications are very similar to Fumiderm. The one that was originally developed is dimethylfumarate, which has one of the fumaric ester salts in Fumiderm, or Tecfidera. And the other drugs, Bafiertam and Vumerity, are in the same class. And of course, these drugs likely also treat psoriasis, even though they haven't all been studied in psoriasis. For example, this is a study on two fumaric esters versus placebo in psoriasis. This is LAS41008. This is a drug in development, but it's just dimethylfumarate, the same as Tecfidera, versus Fumiderm, which contains two fumaric ester salts, one of which is dimethylfumarate, versus placebo. They looked at the percentage of people achieving clear or almost clear skin with psoriasis, and it was in the mid-30s with these fumaric esters versus only 13% with placebo, so they certainly work in both MS and psoriasis. What if you have rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis? Well, there's one multiple sclerosis drug, Abagio or teraflunamide, that's very similar to an old rheumatoid arthritis drug, Arava or leflunamide. You can see the similarity in molecular structure, and Arava is spontaneously converted in the body into a bond at a 70% rate, and that works out perfectly because the standard dose of Arava is 20 milligrams and the standard dose of Abagio is 14 milligrams, so they're basically the same drug. Now, Abagio hasn't been studied in rheumatoid arthritis. Arava hasn't been studied in MS, to my knowledge, but I would expect them to be equally effective in both conditions because they're the exact same drug. Essentially, this is a study looking at rheumatoid arthritis and responders to placebo, Arava, and another drug called methotrexate. You can see placebo about 30% of people get better spontaneously, placebo effect regression to the mean, whereas with the true drugs, including Arava, it's around 50%, so it definitely works. Now, Abagio isn't a great multiple sclerosis drug. It's definitely lower in efficacy, not necessarily appropriate for everyone, and you shouldn't necessarily take it just because you happen to have both conditions. It has to be an appropriate drug for both conditions. What if you have Crohn's disease and multiple sclerosis? Well, these two drugs are FDA approved to treat both conditions. In fact, they're both the same drug, natalizumab. Tysabri is the original formulation. Tyruco is a biosimilar, but they were studied in a head-to-head non-inferiority trial. I reviewed the study in MS, not in Crohn's disease, but they are the same. They're the same drug. These drugs work by blocking lymphocyte trafficking into the central nervous system. That's how they work for MS. They prevent your white blood cells from attacking by getting into your central nervous system. It turns out that the same receptor, alpha-4 integrin, is involved in trafficking into the gastrointestinal tract, so it also works for Crohn's disease, but interestingly, not for ulcerative colitis, or at least it's not studied and proven in ulcerative colitis, the other form of inflammatory bowel disease. This is, for instance, a study in Crohn's disease, Tysabri versus placebo. You can see Tysabri to the left, placebo to the right, and then also the treatment difference to the far right. For instance, clinical response after month 15, 54% with Tysabri, 20% with placebo. If you're looking at clinical remission, not quite as impressive, 40% versus 15%, a 25% absolute difference. What if you have multiple sclerosis and the other inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis? Well, this drug, Zaposia ozonamod, is approved to treat both conditions. Now, this is in a class of medications called S1P receptor modulators. Other examples used to treat MS are Gelenia and Mazent, and I would presume they could also work with ulcerative colitis, but I couldn't actually find any data. 
data. This study looked at some different outcomes. You can see B, the top right, they looked at clinical response. In other words, some improvement. The one milligram ozonamide group, 57% responded versus 37% with placebo. If you looked at mucosal healing, in other words, improvement in colonoscopies, there was 34% healing with the one milligram dose of ozonamide versus only 12% with placebo. How about ankylosing spondylitis and multiple sclerosis? There's not a lot of data on this one. This is a case series of only two people who had both ankylosing spondylitis and some sort of central nervous system demyelinating disease, and they were treated with the drug Cosentix, which is an IL or interleukin-17 blocking drug. So Th17 cells are a type of CD4 positive or helper T cells, which got a lot of hype in multiple sclerosis when I was first training. It turns out that these drugs don't seem to be highly effective in multiple sclerosis, and that's why they weren't pursued for FDA approval, but they probably have some modest benefit, and this has been reported in other case reports. This drug, Cosentix, also treats psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis, and there are a couple other IL-17 blocking drugs, such as TALT, used to treat psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis, and Salik used to treat psoriasis. I think these drugs probably have a modest benefit in MS, but they're likely safe. And there are many other autoimmune diseases and drugs and different combinations, so this chart could be useful to you. Now, this is from a source. It'll be listed as the very first selected source below if you want to read the entire article. It's about multiple sclerosis and different autoimmune diseases and different drugs that have been tried. On the top, you can see the abbreviations for the autoimmune disease, and on the left side, the different medication, and the translation if you're not familiar with these acronyms. Now, it's hard to read this chart, but the plus means that it's actually FDA approved to treat that condition. The parentheses means it's not formally FDA approved, but it's used off-label, as is commonly the case for older drugs, just because there's no economic incentive to pursue FDA approval, and the minus means it's generally generally not used for that condition. For example, methotrexate is used off-label sometimes to treat multiple sclerosis and several other autoimmune diseases, whereas dimethofumarate is used to treat only multiple sclerosis and psoriasis, and many other examples. So if you have MS and a second or even third autoimmune disease and you face this dilemma, I'd be interested to know what did you decide and how did it work out for you? And this topic was suggested to me recently by a patient with multiple autoimmune diseases, and so I do pay attention to video suggestions, and so let me know if you have a topic you'd like to be made into a video, and maybe I'll make it for you.